In this presentation, we're going to look at another model selection procedure. Okay, so what we have here is five predictor variables, x1 to x5. And what we're going to do here is, sorry, I'm just going back here forward a bit, x1 to x5. And what we're going to do is see how we can come up with an optimal set of uh, predictor variables for to model response variable and we're going to base our decision on a metric called the AIC metric or the Aikake information criterion. So the Aikake information criterion. I'm not really great at pronouncing that so if you're if you think it might be pronounced something else you're probably right. But you can google it anyway. So you say AIC okay and these are the AIC values for each possible set of uh, model, uh, a part of each model, each possible set of predictor variables. Just as a remark, if there are two, sorry, if there are five uh, predictor variables, that means that there are 32 possible combinations, sorry, uh, possible subsets, uh, including the a model that has no predictor variables, okay, so this is essentially, there's no predictor variables. Uh, models here that contain just one predictor variable. Uh, models that can contain two predictor variables. And so on. All the way down to models that contain all five variables there. There's just one of those. Okay. So there's 32 possible models altogether. Just as a remark, if there was 10 predictor variables, you would have 1,024 um, possible models, and if you had 20 predictor variables, we're talking in the millions there. Okay, so even to, so, five is manageable, but like even very quickly, you start to get into uh, millions of uh, possible combinations. So what we're going to do here is use forward selection to start off to choose the optimal model. Uh, set of predictor variables based on the AIC. So what we're going to do is just start again and we're going to start here with forward selection that means we start with an empty model no predictor variables and move forward. So this is phase one okay and what we're going to do now is look at all these predictor, vari predictor variables see if we if we add them in what happens to the AIC. Now in each case what we want is for the AIC to decrease Okay, and by the most as well. So if we add in x4, that would bring down the uh, AIC value to 130. So what we're going to do here is at this first stage, we're going to add in x4 as our first variable. Okay, so x4 is in there. So what we're going to do now is add a second predictor variable. Okay, so what I'm going to do first off is disregard any possible, any model that doesn't have x4 in it already. Okay, our model must have x4. Okay, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to add x1, we're going to add x2, we could add x3, or we could add x5. Okay, so again, let's just look at all the possible combinations, or all the possible AIC values for each case. And in this case, what we're going to do is add in x2, okay? Because that will get the, that's the lowest of the AIC values, and it's an improvement on 130, which we have up here. That's also important. It has to be an improvement. So if it wasn't great in 130, we'd, we'd ignore, ignore it. So now our model is x2, x4. Those are our predictor variables. So now what we're going to do is go on to this third stage here. And again, if a model doesn't have x2 and x4 in it, we're going to, uh, it can't, we can't consider it. Okay. So that's gone. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone that's gone. That one will keep. This one's gone. Uh, this one's gone. And this one's gone. So essentially the options are add in x1, add in x3, 
or add in x5. I think I've got rid of one very, uh, sorry, I, got, I, should, I should have got rid of that one. Uh, add in x5. Okay. So in this case, our current model is has an AIC of 78, but if we add in x1, we can get it down, the AIC down to 75. Okay, so that's where we are now. Uh, X1, X2, and X4. Okay, that's what we have decided on so far. Now, what we're going to do is go and see can we add one more predictor variable and see does that um, give us an improvement. Well, before we even consider this, we have to sort of, we can only consider a couple of cases. Uh, models that have X1, 2, and 4 on it already. So that doesn't have X4. Uh, that one is okay. This one and this one. Okay. So what we have to do is we can either choose this one or this one. Okay. Now both models um, are actually they have AIC values higher than what we currently have. So we're going to not go any further. We're going to stop at X1, X2, X4 because if we add in X3 we would get an AIC going back up to 83 and if we add in X5 we get a AIC value of 104 and neither of those are improvements on our 75. So essentially we're going to stop here at X1, X2, X4. That is our final model according to forward selection. Okay. So that's forward selection. Now I'm going to do backward selection. I'm going to be a little bit quicker about this. So with backward selection we start at the end. Okay. And what we're going to do is see can we improve the model by subtracting variables. So if I was to take out X5 here I would get my model down to 80, uh, have an AIC down to AI 83. If I was to take out X1, I'd get it down to 89. If I was to take out anything else, for example, subtract X4, take that out of the model, or take out X3 or X2, the AIC values go up. So essentially what I'm going to do is just make a choice between this, this option here and this option here. And you can tell pretty clearly that I'm going to go with the first option. 83. So what we're going to do is take out X5. Okay. So at the next step, what we're going to do, see is if we can take something else out. So what I'm going to do is just check through these and just make sure that X5, anything with X5 is no longer considered. We can't consider it because X5 is now out of the model and it's out of the model for good. So I have a couple of options here. Uh, X, subtract X4, subtract X3, take out X2 and take out X1. Okay. Now, in this case, my best option is X1, X3, X4, okay, which is to say take out uh, the second variable X2, okay. And that gets my AIC value down to 72, okay. So that's good. So this is where we're up to now, X1, X3, X4. Okay, we've taken out X2 and X5. So what we're going to do now is see if we can take out X1, X3 and X4. Now let's just go across anything that has X2 and X5 off the list. Now they're out of it for good. So we have the options are uh, what are my options? X1 and X3, that brings gives us an AIC of uh, 81. Let's do this in blue. I have X1 and X4, which is sort of to say subtract X3. That was X4. Okay. That gives us an AIC of 84. And finally, X1, that would give us an AIC of 85. Okay, none of those three options are an improvement on what we had in, in the last case. So in this case, our model is X1, X3, and X4. That's our optimal um, model, okay? And 
that is what we get. That's the optimal model, the optimal set of predictor variables according to backward selection. Now let's just sort of think about this for a second. What did we get when we done forward selection? We got, I'll write it here again, x1, x2 and x4. Okay. When we done it by backward selection, we get x1, x3, and x4. So essentially, they're different uh, models or different combinations of predictor variables. So that's an important thing about forward selection and backward selection. Quite often, it's quite conceivable that the the set of uh, predictor variables that uh, chosen by both methods are would be different. Okay, so. Anyway, that's it. We'll leave it there.